President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy brokering a two-year uh, debt ceiling increase. The next step is getting the bill through Congress. For more, what we can expect, uh, let's welcome Mick Mulvaney, former uh, White House Chief of Staff and former Director of the Office of Management and Budget. He's now co-chair at Actium. And former Democratic U.S. Senator and former Indiana Governor uh, Evan Bayh. And uh, good to have you both on. Senator Governor, uh, I'll begin with, with you, uh, Evan. It's good to see you. Um, would you have preferred a clean debt raise, or do you think there's some things to like in, in this compromise, Evan? Joe, I actually think there's some things to like in this compromise. Uh, first, we're going to get a modest reduction in spending over the next couple of years. It's uh, What's the old saying? Uh, when you're in a hole, the first thing you need to do is stop digging. So at least we're not going to be digging quite as fast. And I think that's good for the country in the long run. We're going to put this issue off until after the next election. And I think what we really need, Joe, is a debate among the American people as to how we want to handle our fiscal situation, uh, how we want to grow the economy, and hopefully we can focus on those big picture things and not an artificially created crisis uh, here that um, really threatened to roil the markets at a, at a vulnerable time for our economy. So I do think there's some mo modest good things. And, but, Joe, the bottom line is this is what divided government looks like. Would you have – trying to figure out – we have you on as not, not a foil for, for – that crazy right winger Mulvaney, but but just as a, <laughs> but just you know as a, I don't know who are you, Evan? Are you you feel comfortable in today's Democratic Party? Well, I'm probably belonging in a museum someplace uh, <laughs> along with other dinosaurs. You know, I'm a I'm a moderate Democrat. I'm more fiscally and economically conservative. For example, I think the best thing we can do to get the uh, the fiscal situation in order is to grow the economy. So oh we should my focus. God. Who, but, I, but at I, the same time. At the same time, on many social issues, I'm more progressive. So um, I'm, I'm sort of a mixed bag. That's what you get. Uh, you are. We, and I just said, you're still young. Yeah. It, <laughs> you, well, I, uh, get back in there. Get back in you, there. You, you, I thought you were my friend. Uh, come on. You, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. Cur I wouldn't. I, I, actually, with Mulvaney, you you are still so actively involved in all in all these things. I, I figure it's like G3. They pull you back in. Uh, what, what, what do you make of this? Uh, I think today's going to tomorrow. Today's a really interesting day, uh, Joe. They've got the rules committee meeting today. Everybody's sort of focusing on the vote on the floor that could take place in the House as early as Wednesday. And what a lot of folks are missing is there's a big rules committee vote tonight. To, or actually, I think earlier, uh, early in the evening. Okay, I, looks like a pregnant uh, pause. He he, uh, he was right in the middle of sense. We're gonna we're gonna get him back. So uh, in the meantime, I'll I'll go back to you. Uh, Evan, do you You're see stuck with me? Uh, how yeah? How much the likelihood that this is a done deal at this point that that uh, it can't be? Uh, we we could have some more membership in the House, and then of course you go over to my old body, the Senate, where the filibuster still exists, and uh, you could get one or two people trying to come up the works. But I think eventually we're going to get this done. Joe, I'm going to date myself again. It reminds me of the old movie Blazing Saddles, where the lead character holds holds a gun to his own head and says, "Stop or I'll shoot." You know, tank, tanking the economy, defaulting really isn't a viable option at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, although I will recall back when I was governor, the state of California, many of your viewers may not remember this, the state of California actually issued IOUs to people that it wasn't paying. And it's not uncommon back in the day that the state of Illinois would just stop paying people for six, nine, 12 months. I don't think as a country we want to do that. That would cause all sorts of chaos. Yeah. But, uh, you know, my favorite line, I like that line. That's a good one. But remember when Governor Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, New York governor, said, uh, I'll stop lying when my opponent does. Uh, he actually said that. <laughs> that's one of the classics. That's, that's a classic. My, Mick, are you back? That's almost like alternative facts. Yeah, it, it is. But there are alternative. We now know that. With, in this two-party system, I see it every, in the media. I see alternative facts. Uh, Mick, what were you? Can you finish your thought? Do you remember where you were? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Today's a big vote. There's a rules committee vote today. Nothing can go to the floor generally in the House without going through the rules committee. It's 13 people, so they need seven votes. There's nine Republicans and four Democrats. Again, it has to clear the rules committee today. Chip Roy from uh, Texas is on that committee. I think Ralph Norman from South Carolina is on that committee. They both indicated that they are inclined to vote against the bill in the Rules Committee, which makes it a very, very tight vote. Um, if it doesn't pass the Rules Committee, it cannot come to a, to a, to a floor vote. So I think um, there should be a lot of attention on that this afternoon, if not getting nearly enough attention to the press today. 
Mick, do you think that uh, the, the far, the, the, the more extreme elements of either party is going to do anything? What, what about the extreme elements? In, and I hate to say it, say it, I'll even say it this way. This is what they call them: the extreme MAGA elements. Do you think that there uh, that they that there's a target on McCarthy's back at this point? No, I, I really don't. I think Kevin has probably done this as well as anybody could under the circumstances. Keep in mind, one of the reasons that the House got upset with previous leadership was that things were done in secret. It was done very top down. All the indications I'm getting from Washington is that Kevin has been fairly transparent. This has been a ground up type of thing. I don't think Kevin's speakership is really at risk in this process. But your point is well made, which is I think the extremes on both sides probably move away from this bill. It's not going to get the far right and it's not going to get the far left. That was probably inevitable because the bill, remember, has to have 60 votes in the Senate. So by definition, it must be bipartisan. Um, so the real question is, does it come to the floor for a vote? I think if it comes to the floor for a vote, it passes. That's why this Rules Committee vote today is so much is so important because the, the right wing of the party has more more influence over the rules committee than it does on the on the floor of the entire house.